just call them like dads, you know, that, um, that kind of maybe got into CrossFit last year, you know, were able to, you know, do some things, but a lot of the gymnastics things, they're not, you know, able to execute. So like now we've got two, I'm, I'm just going to call them dads, um, that can do toes to bar. We got Peter, I'm going to shout out to Peter, got his first toes to bar yesterday and he got some kipping swings that didn't look terrible like he and the <laughs> smile on his face it was like he just saw his like child born like it was that radiant and it's been being on a podcast when you call is too much of that The writing to me is a, it's a compulsion. I was, I was one of those hard workers that. I think quite honestly, the fitness industry and the sports performance industry has probably done a better job in looking at nutrition as, as it impacts it. Than... Welcome everyone back to no you are doing this. <laughs> the gym is reopened as of what? June 4th? June 4th? June th beginning of June. <clears throat> We're reopened. Hi. Hi. Uh and uh yeah, welcome back. It's episode 51 in the series. <laughs> and today's topic is what kind of coach do you need? Yeah. Do you like where I put the emphasis? What kind of coach do you need? Do you need? need. Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, mm -hmm. not not you in and as in plural, right? But you, actual you. Yeah. And maybe we can talk about specifically who you need and also who I need. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, so let's uh, let's not start with that. We we start with something else. Well, we're going to start with just like a um, hi there and, and hello, um, because we are back and uh, back and rolling, uh, fully operational. And I have some news, too. What? Uh, well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He, he just, yeah, you've just sprung this on me. Yeah. Um, but yes, we, we have been open for the last month and it's month and a bit now and it's going um, swimmingly well. Um, we're having a lot of fun. There's been a lot of great new members to the community and they are just a fantastic group of people. We're still onboarding people all the time mm -hmm. and um yeah, it's just so amazing to be in a group environment again, especially after a very cold, <laughs> lonely winter that <laughs> didn't seem to end. Yeah. Um, it's just the the polar opposite of what we went through for what how you seven just months? Went, went yeah, you went through Canadian summer. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much even even thinking about just like sitting here at this brand new table by the front windows mm -hmm. compared to where we were recording before was which was at the back of the gym mm -hmm. in a very cold area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a very different feeling. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we're here in the in the in the front part uh, area. This is our new kind of um chit chat area mm -hmm. uh this is where we do the the some of the uh, goal talks some of the you know just when we do team meetings and stuff like that mm -hmm. it feels nice to have the round table so yeah. you you you're sitting next to almost everyone but yeah. um yeah no we have been open up a bit more than a month mm -hmm. so it has been a a pretty hectical and uh, a lot of fun and this is definitely one of the most fun years i've experienced at the gym uh, classes are uh, just so much fun mm -hmm. uh, such a good vibration and energy and um, yeah 
we we I think we started off very well. I've got so much good, also you know, feedback from the members. So I'm very grateful about that. Um, mm -hmm. And we had some members that have uh, been leaving, uh, and uh, but no hard feelings. It's been also had super good uh, like uh, talks to some, uh, especially Tim. So if you're listening, Tim, uh, thanks for for all your feedback. Uh, and I, I think I think you will be back. I'm I'm sure. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I I it comes down to a bit of the the topic of today, like mm -hmm. what kind of coach you need. Um, but yeah, I have some other news. Um, You're having another baby. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no babies. Um, <laughs> but we uh, no. So I'm. I'm. We have the escapist games coming at. 31st of July. Yes. Rebecca, you don't really know exactly what's going to happen in this one. Nope. And I'm also not going to know what's exactly going to happen because I'm not going to be here. Yeah. And this is the first time I give the stewardship to uh, the coaches here to really take the the load in this one. So we got to show up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, need to show, <laughs> you need to show up. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, kind of test test. Uh, you, Vanda, and Juliana will mm -hmm. will be uh, doing most of this. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna enjoy seeing that. Uh, I like. I, I miss not <laughs> being here. Yeah. But I also enjoy seeing you guys doing that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Thank you. So, um, so that's one thing. And then in August, end of August, probably. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the date is not clear, but I'm going to start a escapist health lab. Oh, so this is going to be an experiment okay. uh, where I'm going to, I'm going to do some tests on some members mm -hmm. and I'm going to test also maybe some people from outside depends mm -hmm. on how many sign up for it, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, uh, finalizing the, the, let's say, um, the signups for that mm -hmm. and let that go for now for a month and then kind of see kind of what people we have there, what kind mm -hmm. of cohort we have. And then we're going to do some uh, metabolic uh, health testing. Very cool. Over a period of three months. Wow. And um, yeah, it's going to be uh, mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial uh, health. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at specifically people's ability to break down uh, lactate or lactic acid. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's going to be a cool experiment uh, and it's going to be for free. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be picky on who I'm going to pick out. And okay. I'm gonna, then, you know. So can people like audition for it? Exactly. They have to send videos and whatever. No, it, it's it's just a questionnaire. And then, you know, depending on how many sign up, I might need to pick out some or everyone can do it. I mean, if it's not so many that sign up. That's amazing. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, uh yeah, the, then we have some other stuff happening. We have uh, since we started, we started with the uh, the levels mm -hmm. and starting to implement them a bit more rigorously in in uh, in our program, mm -hmm. but also in our onboarding mm -hmm. and stuff. So uh, that has given members some good carrots to work on i think yeah absolutely and there's something about just even having that little that you know that that um the levels up on the board um you know there's something about like i don't know if it's like colors or if it were to be numbers but it's not everybody but you know our community are really invested in their fitness and mm -hmm. improving and so i love to see as a coach now, you know, people, you know, kind of like maybe three, four times in a, in, in a class going to look at the board, you know, looking at the colors, seeing, you know, oh, what, what color did, you know, um, I don't know, Ivan, you know, score today or whatever, whatever it is. Um, 
And so I, I can see that people are very much invested in their progress, which for us is such a gift because it, it allows us to then push somebody even further. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I call this the health and fitness map mm -hmm. for, for a reason. Yeah. Um, so it has these different levels mm -hmm. and depending on, on what side of this scale you are, the healthier you get. So the yeah. fitter you get, the healthier you get. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the hypothesis and thesis is ba basically that, um, to be in this like upper region of, of fitness, mm -hmm. For a long while, you can't uh, neglect nutrition. You can't right. neglect sleep and and all those stuff. Right. Um, and um, also, it, it's a map, so it tells you where you are, mm -hmm. and it also tells you where you can go. Where you can go, exactly. And, and that's, I think, one of the biggest issues I would say mm -hmm. with fitness in total. Like, mm -hmm. if you, uh, I talked to one lady yesterday who is like certified Les Mills. Uh, trainer mm -hmm. I mean what's the what's the goal of that uh, like the exercise program I'm not a Les Mills expert so uh, but uh, from the outside it looks more like dancing mm -hmm. and there's no special special like rep schemes or so mm -hmm. or they are but uh, it's more like you know uh, cardio right cardio 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 and then you have uh hit training it's mm -hmm. more cardio 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 and uh, so if you look at most of these boot camps and, and so on it's very focused on one thing it's cardio right. and and uh which is which is great but we simply neglect strength mm -hmm. we neglect you know, neural neurological stuff right. uh, for development but also these, you know, the nutrition and, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So this is, of course, like a map where we see, hey, I'm going uh, to get to the next level. There is a next level or, or the, there is a progression. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I might need to drop some body, body fat mm -hmm. or, you know, I need to, instead of increase my, my cardio more, I need to increase my strength more. Right. And, and that becomes you know more and more yeah uh, obvious the longer you do that so but you know what i've noticed since we've been open is that <clears throat> the you know our our members are kind of taking their their fitness kind of um like we have one member who who is very strong and is really kind of dialed in right now into his technique and getting better at gymnastics um and, and vice versa. But then we also have members that are, you know, guys that, that have been kind of, you know, let's just call them like dads, you know, and that, um, that kind of maybe got into CrossFit last year, you know, were able to, you know, do some things, but a lot of the gymnastics things, they're not, you know, able to execute. So like now we've got two, I'm, I'm just going to call them dads, um, that can do toes to bar. We got, Peter, I'm going to shout out to Peter, got his first toes to bar yesterday and he got some kipping swings that didn't look terrible. Like he and <laughs> the smile on his face, it was like he just saw his like child born. Like it was that radiant. And it's been so incredible to be a part of that. Um, this kind of revamping of the of the box and, and reopening mm -hmm. and that kind of enthusiasm and that fight that that that. Um, that our members are, you know, experiencing now. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been a very good ride mm -hmm. uh, to start. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I, I uh, there are some surprises coming to that too. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not going to say anything yet. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, things are in the cooking. Yeah. And uh, uh, Frida has been working on. So uh, cool. That comes too um yeah cool so should we let's segue yeah i guess let's just segue <laughs> into the topic of the day is what kind of coach do you need yeah so so take it away what what, what should we look at well we <clears throat> uh we look at coaching 
and coaching is uh, is having someone um, you know sometimes knowing more than you mm -hmm. but sometimes it's someone who mm -hmm. just cares about you mm -hmm. sometimes it's somebody who's um, telling you which next step is to take mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just somebody that you can keep accountable to yeah and <clears throat> for most people uh, the accountability part is the biggest so the if we look at uh, uh you know escapist here is that we have the group training so when you book a class that's sort of like uh uh you book a class that's a sort of a accountability mm -hmm. tool so you book it and then you need to show up but you're not accountable to a specific person right when you do it so what happens and this becomes more uh like in our box that's it becomes very uh noticeable if somebody mm -hmm. does it but in the bigger classes are the 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 bigger chance you have to be anonymous and just you know kind of right hide sne sneak out and hide yeah and uh, this is the classical thing with a gym membership people buy a gym membership with a classical gym uh in january and then they say i'm gonna train and then you know you sign the contract and then you show up twice and then you know you have the you bought the gym membership as accountability to i'm gonna spend money right so i actually go to the, do something but just spending money is not enough mm -hmm. um and especially if it's you know in those lower ranges yeah so it becomes like ah you know i can postpone this mm -hmm. and uh so that, that's uh the accountability and the higher the amount goes the higher the accountability and the more personal it is as <clears throat> we have the one-on-one -on -one coaching is the highest level of accountability mm -hmm. you actually have a, an appointment with a person yeah and we haven't really had that uh, like if we compare classes with one-on-one -on -one, accountability on the one-on-one -on -one is just you know it's 100 percent in compare because people if you have an appointment with a person, you in person, in person, yeah. it takes a lot for you to not show up. Right. And it's usually only when it's like disasters mm -hmm. uh, that that happens. Mm -hmm. But um, and the same thing is, you know, uh, it can be in training, but it's in all kind of coaching, really. So it can be uh, coaching within your nutrition, mm -hmm. the coaching within uh uh, different areas like life, lifestyle coaching, business coaching, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on where you are in, let's say, your journey and your maturity and everything, you need different coaches right. and different coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, <clears throat> if you are a, a CrossFitter and you want to get into the CrossFit Games, mm -hmm. you need to have a specific coach looking at specific things for crossfit training mm -hmm. uh, for com competition crossfit and that's a different thing than the me me method of crossfit mm -hmm. um so then you need that kind of a coach and if you want to get let's say good at the method of crossfit meaning getting you know maximized health uh, and maximized fitness well, then you need somebody who really can help you depending on where you are at that journey. So mm -hmm. if you are specific into, into this path and you want to just become a bit better on some, one certain movement, uh, we, we take the pull up for an example. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense for you to have a coach working with you on the pull up mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. And uh, that coach can be the same coach that also, of course, helps you with the nutrition. Um, so, um, but uh, having the wrong coach would be the guy who is the, the coach who wants to train people for the competition. Right. 
uh, because when you come in and you say, I want to get my pull up, he's like, okay, here is the program. We're doing 300 pull ups today. Yeah. And, uh, and we're going to do a lot of carb loading and blah, blah, blah. And it's mm -hmm. like, but hey, I'm, you know, I'm 20 kilos overweight and, mm -hmm. and so on. It, so that becomes the wrong coach for yeah. the wrong uh, purpose. So, um, <clears throat> So that that's one one thing, and then you know, as you evolve, also the coach evolves, and, right. and having the right, um, having the, the 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 coach that can see it from from the outside can also, of course, provide another um, you know long term mm -hmm. vision. But uh, and this comes down to something we also kind of touch to and I've touched to in our newsletters is that <clears throat> for some people it's not super obvious why, why they are training so you might need a coach just to understand why are you showing up right um, and you might need a coach to help you find your main priorities in life because your main priority should not be um uh, you know, doing fitness for the sake of fitness, mm -hmm. that sense. but yeah. you want to use your fitness <laughs> to improve yourself in the most important things in your life. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, as a box owner, as a, um, you know, coach that coaches the group classes often, how many, no, how, how do I ask this? So in like one class, how many hats are you wearing? How many co different coach hats are you wearing? Because there's various people, various athletes, various levels. Exactly. Good. Very good question. Uh, we, so when I started uh, coaching, I coached, you know, in ice hockey. Um, and th it's very like, let's say, same kind of people like mm -hmm. you, you have the same target like mm -hmm. you want to have a good team and you want to win the games mm -hmm. so everyone has the si same like <laughs> priorities um and in a gym uh when when we uh opened this one i had the same let's say mentality that everyone wants to go uh in the same direction right so for example well the crossfit was for me uh, as it is for many others is like well it's uh it's a uh, group group training and it's mm -hmm. like this and whatever and then you know as i matured as a coach i started to also understand like hey everyone has very individual needs and also needs different type of coaching mm -hmm. and yes so in a class there can be a very diverse type of people you might have uh, the dads you might have the moms you might have the the you know the competitive youngster mm -hmm. uh, you might have the scared one you might have mm -hmm. the quiet one you mm -hmm. might have the loud one mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all of these guys needs um, like it comes down to a lot of like personality types and so on, but you might have a very disagreeable person. Mm -hmm. You might have very agreeable persons and all these guys will interact differently. So how do you balance that? How do you balance yourself as a coach to be able to, in a way, cater to everybody and be that coach for every person without feeling like you're like a schizophrenic? <laughs> yeah. So or like I, multiple personalities. Yeah. So I think a lot of the coaching... <clears throat> of uh the individuals comes outside the training room mm -hmm. and that's why um i just see so much value in this just talking to members one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one. Mm -hmm. and only by doing that we can really coach them mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes much easier in the room yeah um and it becomes, you know, we have our language already. I, we just, our eye, eye, eye contact is already enough of coaching for, for you to understand like, oh yeah, I'm work, we're working on this. Right. Um, 
and then you know the classes the, the coaching in a group becomes much easier because mm -hmm. everyone is so aligned with what actually is important for them mm -hmm. and they know that m me as a coach that i'm also mm -hmm. uh, want to have the absolute best thing for each individual and mm -hmm. not for my sake yeah i don't i don't need to have like <clears throat> for example uh i have a class and i have a person i know already can't do overhead squats mm -hmm. so uh, what i do is uh i talk to that person already before class and i say hey we're doing overhead squats today and uh, we're gonna do some mobility but like in the workout we're not gonna do overhead squats yeah you know you're already prepared for that mm -hmm. and the main reason is that because i want you to get the stimulus of the workout and um and that's not um, necessarily the overhead squats today mm -hmm. uh, and you know okay good and then we have a plan and the class is there and then we check in class exactly what's going to be the best and of course when you know that as an as an athlete and you come in uh, it's the same thing when I come into class and 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 you you you're coaching and you say hey Richard you're going to stand there I'm like oh she she has a plan for me yeah very good mm -hmm. so um so that's a uh, super good uh, feeling for me. I know, okay, there's somebody actually having made some thought here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and the, that's where we want to go. And um, I think we can manage to come there uh, with everyone uh, within this, you know, this half year at mm -hmm. least. But it's a process. Yeah. And you don't, you know, you need to earn, you need to get that trust and and so on and that's why we have um, you know do our best for the onboardings and, and right so on too, too. but also something that i was just thinking about is you know really it does kind of in a way depend on the the workout of the day also because you know like for instance today we're working on you know back squats okay mm -hmm. that is um something generally people can do to a certain degree, um, some better than others, usually like because of like mobility issues. Um, but it kind of takes a certain kind of coach to coach that aspect. But then you have something like a workout, like a pain storm or something where you're kind of that accountability coach for everybody doesn't matter your strength it's going to be a hard workout whether it's your first time doing crossfit or your 500th time doing a class mm -hmm. um so it's kind of also as the coach is being intuitive and understanding the stimulus understanding the group atmosphere and kind of what they're all going to go through um so yeah, it does take kind of like your, you know, your own intuitiveness mm -hmm. to kind of um, uh, navigate. Exactly. And yeah, sometimes coaching is simply the setting up the strategy mm -hmm. for the, uh, like if it's an endurance thing, we say we have two hours of rowing. Mm -hmm. well what's the what's the purpose of a coach is gonna a coach stand there for 30 every 30 seconds just say hey hey come on come on yeah no the coach the coaching happens before it's like first 10 minutes it's going to be like this second 10 minutes it's going to be like this right and that's the strategy so then the accountability comes in when the athlete is rowing mm -hmm. and it's like okay we're reaching the 10 minute mark mm -hmm. uh, now we go into this pace yeah and and uh yeah uh, and that's you know instead of somebody just jumping on the rower rowing for two hours which sounds like a, an amazing plan mm -hmm. um that that athlete will have much less out of those two hours than somebody who has a, actually a plan and that comes down to like the training overall mm -hmm. i would say uh, like for your year do you yeah. have a is there a plan is there a strategy for this yeah um, something that I often do when I'm doing nutrition coaching is that, um, in like the, the, like the assessment form, but I all, but I also ask like in conversation, like, what do you expect from me? Mm -hmm. 
do you often or ever ask in like, let's say just like a non-sweat, um, it would be generally in like mm-hmm. in, in a non-sweat or in a goal talk, like what do you expect from me as a coach? Yeah, exactly. What, so what, exactly what are your expectations? Mm-hmm. And it basically comes down to, to and the accountability towards us as coaches is to have a recheck on, hey, did we actually... Or were we able to manage to do this? Plan? Live up to your yeah, yeah, to your needs. And are you happy? Are you is there something you know? Yeah, there are so many things that can happen in your life that also me as a coach I know might not know about mm-hmm. unless we actually take our time to just talk about those external uh, factors. Yeah new job, new girlfriend, new boyfriend, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what what kind of coach do you need right now? What kind of coach do I need? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. That was why there was a really long pause. Um, For me at the moment, presently, I need a coach to... Knowing myself, it sounds weird saying this, but I feel like I've become a little bit lazy lately. <laughs> not lazy, like, like, ugh, I'm just not going to work out. Like, I will work out, hmm. but um, being really, like, intentional about my workouts. Like, I think I need somebody a little bit more on top of me right now um, with, um, like, technique, um and just like pushing me a little bit harder yeah yeah what kind of coach do you need uh i i think i need multiple coaches and this comes down to you know the right coach for the right Mm -hmm. thing um but yeah i need uh if we look at training inside the gym Mm -hmm. i need uh i need a gymnastics coach Mm mm-hmm so I got a gymnastic coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, second, I need a business coach. Okay. So I got a business coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need, uh, on the longer term, I need a, a financial coach mm-hmm. to help me uh, be a bit smarter mm-hmm. with what I'm doing. Not for my... Not really for my sake, but for, you know, family and, and so on. And mm-hmm. I would rather have somebody knowing more than me <laughs> helping okay. me out. And, uh, yeah, I need to have a good uh, tax advisor uh, okay. coach mm-hmm. on that. So that's uh, not because I'm, you know, I'm flooding money. Mm-hmm. That's total opposite. I'm, I'm losing so much money because I'm paying so much taxes everywhere okay so having the right coach on that Mm -hmm. would might enable me to actually buy a couple of new trousers every year instead of every three years (laughs) (laughs) all right (laughs) um but yeah so there are multiple i think it comes yeah uh and it's again you don't want to do everything at once right um, but, um, I, uh, you can definitely have the wrong coach. Yeah. And, uh, that has happened to me and, uh, I've sometimes been the wrong coach for other people. Mm-hmm. So that's something I also think about mm-hmm. to be more, you know, self-reflecting about, mm-hmm. but then the best thing I can do as a coach is actually to coach someone to find the better coach. Right. For that purpose. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think I don't think every coach, it doesn't matter how incredible you are, is for everybody. Um, I think that, you know, when you when you find somebody that you can connect with, that you feel that like you understand their language, um, the the way that they speak, the the vocabulary that they use, you know, you hear 
you know, two people might be saying the same thing, but one, one person, the way that they say it just resonates differently, mm. you know? Um, and I think, yeah, being kind of not just like kind of, <clears throat> oh, this person, this, this person looks like, you know, the, you know, this is a gymnastics coach. I'll just go with this person. Mm. Right. Well, they might not talk to you in the way or coach you in the way that, resonates with you that makes you understand how to execute a movement um and i and i think that that's exactly the same for you know even for people that are like tax advisors my tax accountant don't like him don't like him so i work with everybody in the office except him because like the way he talks to me it's just it's it <laughs> causes me anxiety so i work with all of the lovely other ladies in the office because they speak the language that I can understand mm. um, in the tone that makes me feel like I can trust them, mm. like I'm comfortable um, and that I can, you know, express my needs and get my, um, you know, get my needs catered to. Yeah. So, uh, which makes me think of, uh, um, yeah, a, a future um, maybe coach I'm going to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um but uh yeah no definitely and i think i didn't say this but i'm i'm looking also to engage uh like a weightlifting coach also mm -hmm. um but it's not only going to be for me but mm -hmm. uh again my my goal now is also to get um all our coaches even more coaching and uh yeah Oh, and, you, and you're and you're getting some nice coaching too in, in this fall. So this, oh, yeah. this this is going to be also, you know, I'm very excited level, about level, that level leveling up. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything more we want to say about that, but um, yeah, I, I think one big realization for me was this very hard to coach anyone that doesn't have priorities uh yeah and uh, because nothing is a priority mm -hmm. you, you don't know where to put your fitness on mm -hmm. on the hierarchy yeah right yeah so um or whatever your job or, mm -hmm. or something. but um yeah so that's been the realization mm -hmm. i forgot to say one more news is that i'm going to be the uh the main voice for the official crossfit german speaking channel what <laughs> yeah. that's so cool yeah so that's also gonna start happening and Very i'm, I'm cool. already looking into some potential cool interviews i know what that. kind of coach you would need for that yeah a voice and speech coach and speech goes I, I, i've actually had one have you mm -hmm. and how was that experience in german yeah okay. it was very uh <laughs> it was good but i i also felt it was a lot of uh just like phonating not yeah but it was <laughs> like i don't know it was a bit too much of a spiritual things going oh, on too yeah um but yeah for sure like uh I think I improved my German mm -hmm. with doing that. It was like art articulating a bit better. Okay. And um, uh, German words and mm -hmm. like some some sounds were not really spot on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you can do this with any kind of language coach. Yeah. Uh, like if even in, so, I got this language coach for someone who was a native German. Okay. So it was not like for foreigners, but it was for native Germans because. As a native, you can also improve your yes, absolutely your speaking tone. And this is something that you have very like I don't know if it's natural talent or because of all your vocal singing mm -hmm. in, in the background, but you have like a very clear voice. And I feel like I have a lot of things happening. You just need to bring your sound a little bit forward in the mask. But we could talk about singing and speech <laughs> and voice for like a long time. We're not going to get into that right now. But I have different voices depending on which language I have. Yeah. So that's also strange. I don't know why. But anyway. So like your voice, like when you speak uh, Swedish with Frida, yeah. half the time I'm just like, it's not even a real language you guys are speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, 
um but yeah anyways okay well that was a uh, that's about it that's about it <laughs> <laughs> very good all right so um you're going on vacation next week yeah and uh, we're gonna see i hopefully uh this is gonna be the ladies uh show next next week or if we can figure out how to seamlessly work the microphone as you did today <laughs> um yeah we can do that all right okay. let's see do you trust us yeah it's gonna, all right yeah. <laughs> nothing bad's gonna happen no 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 mm -mm. all right it'll become like the view <laughs> all right yeah. see you next time see you Bye. Being on a podcast, the pitfall is too much of that. The writing to me is a—it's a compulsion. I was, I was one of those hard workers. That... But I see the fitness industry and the sport performance industry has probably done a better job in looking at nutrition as as it impacts it. Than...